Hey Google, start a 35 minute timer. Hey Google, start a 35 minute timer. Alright, 35 minutes, starting now. Alright, hey, hey, what's up everybody? This is Guest Clean Statements from the E2KG Network channel on YouTube, GearWorks.com, the tech blog, and you are here on my gaming channel, Rounding Off Infinity. And this morning, we are going to be doing a little Let's Play. No, why did I do that? Uh, in Bayonetta for the Nintendo Switch. So one word describes this game, and that is ridiculous. Um, but it, it's a little more kind of fun ridiculous rather than uh, Devil May Cry's uh, ridiculous over-the-top action plus ridiculous over-the-top at times. Uh, difficulty. Now, Devil May Cry's difficulty is not necessarily Ninja Gaiden's difficulty, but it is, uh, I've only played one variant of that game, and I can't remember exactly which one it was, but I definitely, uh, failed out. I don't think Bayonetta is capable of drowning. Yeah, that was one of my concerns last night, but I think somewhere in here there's like a... I thought there was a ledge that you could get up on. I seem to be not finding it now. Oh, here we go. Now, I do not know what's going on with the red laser things. I don't know if that's, uh, I think I've got myself twisted around and I'm going backwards. So I restored these statues last night. Maybe I didn't find a way out last night. Yeah, that's the problem. Hmm. It's a good old fashioned third person action game getting stuck point. I wonder if I'm supposed to destroy these statues, or if it's even feasible. Oh, there's something... Something... Ah, okay, here we go. Dodging the lightning in a single hair's breath. I do not know what that means. Yep, that is apparently not the mechanic I'm going for. Oh. 
Oh, there we go. Alright. Okay, let's go ahead and run down the hardware that is in play today during the game capture. So I'm recording this morning using the Avermedia Live Gamer. I'm sorry, it's not the Live Gamer. Uh, the Avermedia Game Capture HD2, model C285. Now this is an older Avermedia device uh, that I still really like. It's um, one of my standalone recording devices, which is nice because it means I don't have any dependency on a PC to record. Now, of course, what that means is I also have less control from a production standpoint as far as the types of things I can do, but, uh, But it makes it dead simple to pull a recording together, for the most part. Now where I ran into issues was, was with some of the audio uh, when I was doing uh, the demo reel last night. Now I think this is about as far as I got when I was playing this game on the Nintendo Wii. Or maybe, I think there's a boss battle after this and maybe I did get to that. Now one of the cool things is uh, you have uh, immediate access, in the Switch version you have immediate access to, I think most, maybe all of the costumes that Bayonetta has. taking me a bit of time, but I think I'm getting used to the control scheme on this now. I still get uh, flummoxed a bit by the uh, whole A being on the right <laughs> change from Western controls to the Nintendo. It's making my buddies downstairs awfully nervous. And your point is... Some places in this world are closer to Paradiso or Inferno. The rat hole of the town you and I live in is close to both. But the Vibridians, they got a special air about them. They're closer to Paradiso. Now, where I ran into problems with the audio setup last night was, uh. Shit just plain creeps me out. I was trying to use my Behringer Xenus 302 USB hardware mixer uh, in line in between. The C285 in my headphones and microphone, and it's getting a lot of microphone bleed over. Since it seems no, I, I suspect that's because the if you come across any of these, bring them to powering up. And I'll hook you up. Excuse me, powering the microphone <laughs> for the Behringer's uh, so XLR Phantom Power. Real cute. Ports. It's not as clean as using the uh, breakout power supply that I have. I'm only here to watch my handiwork in action, so don't get any bright ideas. So for voiceover commentary, I'm using the Liegi L58 uh, XLR condenser microphone. Uh, in conjunction with its own. If you get in my way, I will. How do the Americans put it? Oh yes. Bust a cap in your ass. <laughs> right on, baby. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> the dialogue in this so far is very much dead or alive kind of dialogue and story. But you just have to kind of accept the game for what it is. Sure. Why wouldn't I? Now this morning, as I mentioned, I'm playing on the Nintendo Switch using the Joy-Con grip controller. You here for business or pleasure? Either way, I'll hook you up. Looks 
like he doesn't have much. Oh no. God, I don't have much cash. So I think I came down here. Uh, I think that was supposed to be just a tutorial about coming to his shop. So this is the first of the costumes that I uh, tried out. I can't remember if you just have access to them. So it's not options. No, I don't want to go to the chapter menu. I definitely don't want to go to the title screen, so I think there are certain points in the game where you can access the menu where you can change her uh, outfit. works in this game. Crafting is a thing that I really don't have a ton of patience for, so at some point I reckon I will have to figure it out. So one of the things with this game is, uh, I think those are the only weapons I have, so there's no need to really rifle through those. Um, weird kind of menu. So just backing out with the B button, you have to actually... So there can be some fairly long sequences between, uh, the cutscenes are really long, and as you can see, you know, getting in between, you know, some stuff to a point where there's any action can be a bit lengthy. So as I mentioned, I played this on the Nintendo Wii a little bit, and then, uh, picking this up on the Switch. I guess what it has is it has some of the unlocks, maybe DLC and stuff that was on. The Wii version. Oh, I'll bundle right in. To, er, the way you get this is you get Bayonetta 2. Now, what I'm not good at is... Uh, Oh. 
definitely not fully understanding the weapon system yet. in the head in my offensive that I uh, don't pay enough attention to the battle rhythm of the defensive. right now. Finishing moves. <laughs> now, am I actually able to pick this up? Ah, okay, very cool. I guess I will continue on from here. So like I said, I'm doing the game capture using the uh, Avermedia Game Capture HD2 C285. For the voiceover commentary, I am using the Viegi L58 XLR condenser microphone powered off of its own... Uh... Whoa, really? Come on. Ridiculous. I wonder if I'm going to have that big axe when I go back in. Doesn't look like it. And it is not laying there on the ground. Great. Clip it? Guess not. Maybe. Don't appear to have a lot of weapons options. I'm gonna have to dive into the menu. I couldn't find any enabled video skills. Go to the music video nice. and book section of the Alexa app. Enable the video provider you want. Then link your account and complete setup. Don't appear. 
doesn't look like I have any actual options. Alright, let's get out of that. No. Some of these sequences are a little silly, just like I don't know why they make a point of having you beat up a brick wall. So I guess if there were limited opportunities to change costumes, I really ought to change them each opportunity I get or whatever. I should have mentioned if I didn't already, so... I don't know if I'm doing anything but worthwhile damage. I can see the damage meter down there. I go out there and get it. Yeah, this isn't particularly effective. So you apparently I keep trying to do the dodge, you guys should have to release. So one of the reasons I am not a huge fan of games like this is because I cannot tell what the heck is going on. You know, some of the systems sometimes you don't know if you're taking damage or This is an Accounting of Third measure, Measures, episode number 305, which is the channel's series. Third person action games. Chase him off, like it's kind of anticlimactic. Uh, and for headphones today, I am using the uh, Plantronics Rig Flex 
some headphones. So I guess the red lightning and stuff on the edge is when I'm extremely damaged. Alright, so that's him having to Renan's place, but I don't have. Oh, okay. And now I can't leave. Great. Low on health. Come on. So one of the things I really like about the C-285 is it has two 3.5mm stereo jacks right on the front panel. So I'm able to just plug my headphone uh, directly in, as well as uh, the Lee Aegee L-58. Now the Lee, Lee Aegee L-58 is an XLR microphone, but... Uh, can I not go up that way? So yeah, so I'm able to just plug uh, my headphones directly into the front panel and get a pass-through from the audio and uh, plug in the microphone. Uh, like I said, the Liege L58 is an XLR microphone, but it has... But it also has an uh, adapter to break off of the 48-volt uh, phantom power supply and uh, go to a 3.5mm stereo input jack. And that's it. So it's a pretty dead simple setup. Setup this morning. No, uh, no software involved, other than what's on the Aver Media. Like I said, it's really uh, neat. No, no. Points for halos. Sure. 
not even quite certain I understand what that means, but whatever. Alright, so I'm starting to make some movement around the map. Looks like I need about a hundred thousand halos to even make it worthwhile for me to go to Rodan's store. So like I said, the cool thing with the C-285 is it makes things really simple, but uh, it also means I don't have a ton of control in how to, you know, different things I could do production-wise. would have to do all that post. And there are... Some days that I do that, and a lot of days that I don't, so like I'm not going to post with this, which is why I'm not using the webcam. I have to then overlay it and uh, edit in the webcam myself uh, after the recording. I'm not absolutely certain uh, how my audio mix balance is going to be. I can set that in the C285's uh, control panel yourself. Fancy bumping into you here. But it is a bit of a crapshoot on how well it comes out. To find some answers about your past, are we? So here are one of the lengthy cutscenes that I mentioned. This may actually take up my remaining game time for this session, so. Powers. But you'll have to forgive me. Do we know each other? <laughs> Same powers. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Your little dip in that lake has left you a bit rusty. Oh, I've been high and dry for 20 years now. The only rust on me is from the lack of any real challenge. Perhaps you're up for the task. You've already disappointed me. Forgotten your destiny and wasted the past 20 years. You're right. I do seem to be having trouble remembering things of late. Would you be so kind as to take it from the top? Two overseers, the eyes of the world. They are the power behind. As heir to the clan, the time has come for you to prove your right to fight under the Umbra name. You may select opponents of your choice. Then allow me to face the outcast. Then none! Helen Kiadagat! The child is of impure blood. Challenging her would be a violation of our tenants of faith. It would not be the first time we've faced each other. Jared? Will you face me in this hallowed arena? Well, if I must. But I pray you've got a little something for me in return. You know, I'm very fond of stuffed animals. Hey, Google. Stop the timer. Alright, so we're just gonna get past this cutscene and then we're gonna break this off. Uh, really? Face a wall. Okay. Jumping 
Ich nehme zum Witch Walk. Ja, ich bin Speck. Und ich bin nicht mehr in der Wind, das war ich, das ist nicht kurz in der Pass, oder? Recording going that long. I don't know. Here we'll go. Cutscenes. Sure. All right, well, look, that's going to do it for me for this episode of An Accounting of Third Measures. Measures, I believe, this is episode number three hundred five. So, thanks once again for joining in. Uh, if you happen to swing by and check out this archive version of the video. On my YouTube channel, Rounding Off Infinity. And once again, my name has been a guest, Lee Stevens from GearWorks.com, the tech blog, and the E2KG Network podcasting channel on YouTube. That's going to do it for me. I am out of here.